President Trump's supporters are calling for a boycott of Georgia's Senate runoff races. They include prominent attorneys like Sidney Powell, that's President Trump's former attorney, according to Politico. Now, Mr. Trump's claims of election fraud may be the driving force behind this. Now, some Republicans are concerned the president's, quote, demonization of Georgia's electoral system may cost them the Senate. That's all they'll have uh, by next month. James Arkin wrote this article. He is a Senate campaign reporter for Politico and joins me now. Thank you so much for being here with us and happy Thanksgiving. Thanks so much for having me. Happy Thanksgiving to you, too. So you report that the president's supporters are calling for a boycott of these critical Georgia races. They're claiming that senators like Kelly Loeffler and David Perdue may be complicit in the state's alleged electoral fraud. So can you can you help us flesh that out? They're they're alleging that they're not playing for the same team. Yeah, essentially, there's a sort of a growing uh, online movement, and, and it really is happening, you know, mostly online on, on Twitter, on, on Parler. Uh, you know, uh, among a lot of the the president's supporters online, uh, essentially saying, uh, you know, echoing the the calls, uh, the false calls that the Georgia race, uh, that the president won Georgia, uh, and that that it was sort of a conspiracy against him, that there was fraud, that there were problems with the voting system. Uh, obviously, all of that has has been deemed untrue. Um, but there's this this growing um, sort of concern uh, uh, in Georgia about uh, the president's performance there and, and whether or not he was successful. And, and some of his most ardent supporters online are calling for Republicans to be more supportive of, of the president and in, in sort of fighting that. And so they're calling out Senators Perdue and, and Leffler saying that they need to be more supportive uh, of the president. And now the frustration and the irony for Republicans is that Senators Leffler and Perdue have been very supportive of, of the president's calls. I mean, they called on the Secretary of State in Georgia to resign. Uh, and actually, they took a lot of heat from Democrats and even from some within their own party for that for that call. And so they've been really with the president. But it's essentially this this sort of loud, vocal contingent online saying that any you know anything less than 100 percent uh, support for the president isn't enough, and this call to boycott or to write in the president's name. Now, the question for Republicans is just, is this a very, very, very small but very vocal online contingent, or is this kind of seeping out into the broader universe of, of Georgia Republican voters? Right now, most of the Republicans I, I talk to think that it's a very small online contingent, but because these two Senate runoffs are going to be so close, you know, any concern about voters not being 100 percent there for the Republican senators is, is cause for some concern. And then in speaking to Republicans, I mean, how concerned are they that these claims of fraud, both from the president and this group of supporters, no matter how small or large that cohort is, how concerned are they that this could actually hurt the Republicans' chance of maintaining control of the Senate, which is obviously a huge deal? Yeah, I, th I think they're concerned about this, just like they're concerned about sort of almost anything that could go wrong in these runoffs. I, I mean, Georgia is a state that Republicans have won in consistently for decades, and, and Joe Biden flipped it very narrowly. And so I think there's a broad acknowledgement within the Republican Party that these two Senate races are going to be extremely close in January. And obviously, they need to win one. Democrats need to win both in order to have the Senate. And so if Republicans win one or both, they maintain control. And so when you have a very close election expected, and it's going to be massively expensive, hundreds of millions of dollars flowing in, you know, just sort of anything that can turn your supporters uh, against each other, or anything that can create sort of an intra-party rift is cause for concern. And so, you know, most of the Republicans that I talk to, they don't think this is widespread necessarily. They don't think that this is going to tip tens of thousands or, or more Trump supporters away from these senators, because like I said earlier, they, they have, in, in fact, been very supportive of the president. Um, but anything that can tip any supporters away is is a cause for a concern in, in races that are going to be this close and, and this hard fought. Now, a record number of absentee ballots have reportedly been requested for these races. So what can you tell us uh, about what we saw in terms of voter turnout in November and how how that is likely uh, to sort of dictate what we see in January? What is your reporting? What are you learning from your reporting? Yeah, Democrats had a lot of success in terms of the absentee ballots and, and getting their voters to, to vote early and vote by mail. And that was a, a big part of the reason why they had so much success, uh, you know, getting getting so many supporters out and ultimately flipping the state blue for Joe Biden uh, very narrowly. And and so they're they're trying to repeat that. Uh, the, the runoffs are happening at kind of a very odd time. Uh, it's, it's only two months after voters just turned out. And so low information voters 
you know, might not even be aware that the runoffs are happening or when they need to turn out. Uh, it's happening the first Tuesday after New Year's, uh, even New Year's Day. And so it's kind of an awkward time to get people out to the polls. And so that's why Democrats have put such an emphasis on vote by mail and absentee voting and making sure that they can bank as many votes as possible uh, because Democrats' lack of success in previous runoffs has become has come because they struggled to get their voters back out. It was just sort of a lack of enthusiasm, a lack of ability to get their voters to turn out. And that's why Republicans have had success in the past is because they've just been better at getting their voters to turn up again a couple of weeks, a couple of months after the November election. And on the flip side, Republicans, uh, you know, struggled because of uh, President Trump's comments about mail-in voting and, and sort of the way the entire party, uh, you know, sort of uh, expressed kind of concerns, uh, voters expressed concerns about mail-in voting. And so Democrats had much more success in November on that front. And so Republicans are trying to bank as many absentee votes as they can. They're also very, very focused on early voting, which starts in mid-December and getting as many voters out as possible before that January 5th date. Uh, both both sides essentially see any voter that they can bank, that they can get to, to cast a vote, whether absentee or early before January 5th, is a huge victory for them because this, this race is all about turnout. It's all about which side is going to do a better job of getting their voters back out again. And, and so they, they have to rely on getting as many voters as possible to show up before that January 5th date. It'll be very interesting to see. Now, campaign spending for both of these races, for these races, cleared $100 million earlier this month. But as we saw in South Carolina, historically expensive uh, Senate race there, the person or party who spends the most doesn't necessarily win. So give us an update. Where is all this money coming from in Georgia and how might it impact what we see uh, in January? Yeah, Democrats learned that lesson the hard way in, in South Carolina and Kentucky and in Maine and a bunch of other Senate races. Uh, that the best funded candidate does not equal the candidate that's likeliest to win. They lost a lot of races where they outspent Republicans. Uh, I, I mean, both sides are just absolutely flooding Georgia with money already from the campaigns, from outside groups. I, I talked with one Republican earlier this month who predicted $500 million total uh, could be spent on these two runoffs. It would instantly make these two of the most expensive races of all time. And that would be just in terms of what was spent between November 3rd and, and January 5th. And it's it's sort of a situation where uh, you know, neither party has an enormous edge in, in terms of the spending. And so, you know, I don't think that either party feels like they're going to be spending tens of millions of dollars more than the other side, and they're going to have a huge benefit from that. You just, if one side is going to be spending that much, the other side has to match it. And so small dollar donors uh, on the Democratic side, big donors on the Republican side, everyone has sort of gotten on board with this idea that money needs to go there. There are a lot of questions on the Democratic side about how best to use that money. And so you see them, you know, matching so far dollar for dollar or close to it on TV, but the other thing that they're doing is they're putting a lot of that money into ground game, into now I reported this week going back out and knocking on doors, uh, something that they didn't do in the run up to the November election, and essentially putting as much money as they can into the organization and the operation of the campaigns to get these voters out. And that's kind of a hidden amount of money. You see the big TV numbers. What you don't see, what's harder to see, is just how much money is going into the organization on the ground to turn out every single vote possible. Well, James, thank you so much. Thank you.